In my opinion, Uhuru Kenyatta is working overtime to help William Ruto win the 2027 elections. Their teamed up efforts and their strategy is very much clear. The strategy is to ensure that Raila Odinga remains to be the main man from today all the way until 2027. Because they know with him as the candidate, the opposition candidate, there is no way they are going to win. It is the equivalent of fattening your chicken from January, February, March, all the way until December with just the aim of eating that hen for Christmas. It is a very sinister but effective tactic. So in this video I want us to analyze the strategies that Uhuru Kenyatta and his people and President William Ruto are using to ensure that Raila Odinga remains to be the point man in 2027. Now before we proceed, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. So first up is support from Uhuru Kenyatta's point man. I recently saw remarks from Jeremiah Kioni and David Murade, and both of them are saying that Raila Odinga is the man to beat in 2027. That statement could not be any more false, but nonetheless, it feeds very well into their agenda of making sure that the opposition have the weakest candidate amongst them in 2027. In all honesty, Raila Odinga will be 82 years. He is 77 now. Why would he be the candidate? If not for the only reason, which is to ensure that President William Ruto has a very easy and a very quick victory in 2027. Let me just read you the statement from Jeremiah Kioni and David Murade, and you tell me if these guys are not having ulterior motives. So this is what David Murade is saying. For now, a lot will depend on the party leader Raila. I can tell you, if he decides to run again, some of us will support him. But in his own way, if he decides to support somebody else, we will also follow. He is the leader. So we'll be looking up to him to provide the leadership and the guidance in terms of the next dispensation. That is what David Murade is saying. Now Jeremiah Kioni is saying, certainly, there will be more people announcing their plans to run in 2027. The fact that Mr. Wamalwa and others want to run does not take away the fact that Raila remains our preferred presidential candidate. That is Jeremiah Kioni the Jubilee Secretary General. So you can already see that these people are drumming up support for Raila Odinga when they know very well he's a candidate that has lost five times. In 2027, he's going to be at the age of uh, 82 and he will break history to become the oldest candidate to vie for presidency. So that is the first trick that is being deployed to ensure Raila Odinga stays relevant in politics up until 2027. Then the second tactic is the creation of the office of the opposition leader. That move by President William Ruto ensures that Raila Odinga remains relevant up until 2027. He will have everything he needs. He will have the resources, an office, staff, vehicle, security, and even the opportunity to address the National Assembly once every year. That is a special privilege that goes to sitting presidents. But they are now according this to Raila Odinga. So that is actually a very brilliant tactic to keep him relevant. And then it works brilliantly because his deputy, the deputy opposition leader, once that particular office is set up, is a weak candidate. Martha Karua is not even to be considered as a candidate. So that move in and of itself ensures Raila Odinga remains relevant and it keeps Kalonzo Musioka locked out. How he will ever emerge as a big player or a big boy in the opposition will become very, very difficult with the creation of the office of the opposition leader. So that is actually another very brilliant tactic by President William Ruto to ensure that he faces the weakest candidate possible. And even if you watched prior to the 2022 election, President William Ruto insisted that Raila Odinga is his opponent. He refused to consider Kalonzo Musioka as his opponent or anyone else because had anyone else stood against him, it would have been much harder for him to get to the presidency. Kikuyus might have been open to vote for Kalonzo Musioka or Mudavadi or even Wetangula or pretty much anyone else other than Raila Odinga. So William Ruto knew very well that if I install Raila Odinga as the opposition candidate by constantly referring to him as my main competitor, that makes things much easier for me. I can easily lock the Kikuyu vote and I can easily lock the Kalenjin vote. So this strategy, it looks to me like it is once again in play. And that is why the office of the opposition leader, in my opinion, is being created. Now, I'm not saying that is the only reason. Of course, this office is going to outlast even the lifetime of President William Ruto and uh, Raila Odinga. 
but in the short term there is some benefits that go to the sitting president then the third tactic is inviting Raila Odinga to some of these big functions which are designed for presidents Raila Odinga was invited to the US Africa summit and he went there and he addressed other heads of states yet he himself is not a head of state i know he has a role in the AU but his invitation i believe i believe it had a hand with the Kenya Kwanza government and it also works well to keep him relevant in politics both locally and abroad he gets to keep his online market share acquisition which is all you need to stay relevant as a politician you don't even need to do much just be on the tv screens every other day be on the newspapers be on the radio stations that is how you stay relevant and that is how you stay at the back of everyone's mind and Raila Odinga is getting this platform at the US Africa summit which is a very grandiose platform and that ensures that he is the candidate to beat in 2027 Then of course if you look at the investigations into the misdeeds of the past administration and the past general election no active investigations are taking place against Raila Odinga or his people It is very well known that Raila Odinga and his campaign the Azimio campaign were getting 4 million every day from state house that is a crime It is known very well that there is an audio of Junet Mohamed calling one of the commissioners and telling them to come see him but they're not investigating that they do not want to disrupt you know there's this quote they usually say when enemies see you failing they don't disrupt you they let you continue on that path so they don't want to investigate Raila or Junet or anybody in that particular team no matter what they did they want them to stay together because that is the best way to ensure that Raila Odinga is the candidate to beat if you take away Junet Mohamed and some of these other people then you weaken the pack leader and that is what they are trying to avoid by all means so when you put all these four things together you can see a very grandiose plan or scheme to ensure that Raila Odinga is the candidate to beat in 2027 when in all honesty he should not even contest Jeremiah Kioni is backing him David Murathe is backing him William Ruto is creating an office for him an office of the opposition leader all investigations into any possible misdeeds from his caucus prior have all been sidelined and then he is getting invitations to this big summit that tells me that something is cooking and if the opposition is not careful they are headed for another loss in 2027 and out of all this kalonzo musyoka is the one who should be speaking up but he's not doing it i don't understand the man but let's see how things unfold now that's just my opinion guys do drop me your own comments in the comment section below i'll do my best to read them and to give you a response now in the event you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to youtube search for David Ofula hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios